Okay. So um, let's begin. My name is Tori Franklin. I am a nonprofit founder, author, motivational singer, I mean, speaker, <laughs> 20th place, 2021 Olympic triple jumper for Team USA, and Oregon 2022 World Championship bronze medalist. You may wonder why I put such emphasis on my placements at these two competitions. The 2021 Tokyo Olympics was my very first Olympic experience. I qualified for the team. I wore the USA uniform. I got to live in the village and see thousands of athletes from dozens of different sports and even more countries. But my journey to get there was anything but easy. It was the year before the Olympics and I wanted to give myself the best possible opportunity to medal. I was training in my home city of Chicago when I decided I needed to switch coaches. In 10 short days, I packed up everything, left my family and friends and moved to Paris, France. I was dedicated to this dream. Training had its ups, me breaking the indoor American record and its downs, COVID. But three months before the Olympic, before my Olympic debut, my coach told me that he was no longer interested in coaching me anymore and didn't believe that I had what it takes, what it takes to medal. I was left with nowhere to go and I moved back to the US. Because of the language he used and his adamant judgment of my weaknesses, his prophecy came true. Regardless of how hard I trained, and the inner mental and emotional work that I did, it wasn't enough to make the Olympic final and compete for a medal. Where the previous year I was ranked number five, I finished the Olympics ranked 20th. My article, Failing on the Biggest Stage, My Olympic Story, talks about all of the negative emotions I felt immediately after leaving the stadium. From ignoring interviews to not wanting to speak with my coach, to the hours of poisonous internal dialogue that followed. I was embarrassed that I didn't want, and I didn't want to accept the O-L-Y, the O-L-E after my name. I felt like I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve to be an Olympian. On the bus back to the Olympic Village, I wrote down every single one of my toxic thoughts. I knew the thoughts were fleeting, but I, they needed an outlet. I needed them released. I needed to feel them. I, I let myself be as dramatic as I needed to be, writing things like, I might as well let the ants eat me. It would be my greatest purpose to let myself be nourishments for the ants. My journal was a dark place for a while, but, but it helped me get it out. The following year, I was met with an ultimatum. In track and field, if you aren't at the top of your game while in your 30s, then you might as well be at the bottom. I'm only 30, by the way, but sponsors don't want to pay a 30-year-old ranked 20th in the world, especially in the women's triple jump, which is not considered a premier event. So I was told to either hang up my spikes or make some big changes. Of course, I decided to make big changes. I picked up my life, I packed up my life again and moved to Athens, Greece. Are you familiar with the phrase, wherever you go, there you are? Meaning you can run from the problem, but you can't fix the, but if you don't fix the root of it, it will follow you there. And so I did just that, started to fix the root. One second. I don't know why this keeps showing up. Okay. So I began developing a deeper connection and understanding of my mind, body, and spirit. I learned to bring peace back into my life. I started each day with meditation and gratitude. I took the time to learn how to care for my body's aches and pains. 
I taught my mind how to use love for energy instead of rage and revenge. Every day, I felt more and more supported by the universe as I received signs of, align of alignment. You won't believe me, but the sightings of crow's feathers is what gave me the reassurance and the confidence to continue on. I watched as my writing slowly began to change. I was complaining and doubting myself less and less. I could see things going from, what if I don't have what it takes, to lists and lists of things I was grateful for, of goals I dreamed of manifesting, of the unending love that I felt not only for myself, but for the world and the people around me. My article, How I Was Guided to the First Ever Triple Jump Medal for an American Woman, explains this journey of deeper connection and the guidance I received that led me to the podium the very next year. You can find both of these articles on my page at toryfranklin.medium.com. With all that said, my track career is only a segment of my journey and experiences. For many years, I struggled silently with depression and feelings of low self-worth as I tried to heal from sexual trauma. I used writing as a method of healing, a way to control one thought at a time and slowly began to change how I think about myself. I would encourage you to journal often. It will be a place to celebrate your wins, let out the negative let out the negativity following your losses and record your personal journey and growth. Hey, thank you for sharing that, Scott. <laughs> These writings have culminated in my debut memoir, You Anthem, Stories and Reflections of Celebration. It is a raw depiction of the pains of depression and gives the reader tips of how to facilitate their own mental wellness journey. An anthem is a song of praise or devotion. It is a dance that you do in the privacy of your room or on a crowded dance floor, evoking a sense of freedom. It is a poem written from the soul, spilling the truth of your spirit in deep black ink. It is a song sung in the shower, a hug given, a kiss received. An anthem is a meditation of gratitude, a prayer of love. It is an affirmation of all that encompasses you. I said my first anthem when I was crying on my apartment floor, searching for answers, begging for love. When I realized that I already had all of the answers and all of the love that I seek contained within me. So I began giving it to myself in whispers, in writings, in songs that fed my spirit. My aim is that you, Anthem, will help people to create their own. I share these things because I know what it's like to be at the lowest of lows and feel completely alone. I share this book because I want those people to know that I get it. I want them to know that they are loved. Pre-sales for my book begin in about two weeks. But if you would like to stay updated on the journey, you can follow me on Instagram at livehappy, L-I-V-E-H-A-P-P-I-I, -I, or follow and subscribe to my email list here on Medium. Um, so that is what I have for you. The floor is open for questions or general dialogue. I see one question here already which is how does your mindset as an athlete contribute to your daily life? Well, being an athlete is right now is my daily life. It is, it's very intense um, because we have world championships in just two weeks, but all in all, I would say that being an athlete has taught me how to one, compartmentalize and two, continue through loss or setbacks. The compartmentalization is because when I am on the runway or when I'm on the track, when I'm practicing, I can't be worried about other life struggles and worries. Otherwise, I'm not being connected to my body. I'm not focusing on what I need to do in training and competition. I'm not able to execute the way that I need to execute in order to win. 
The second, um, being able to manage setbacks and to continue. A lot of times in track and field, you do not win. In fact, I have I lo I lose far more often than I win. And this just continues to teach me how to keep getting back up, to keep taking positive lessons from any and every experience and um, having undying belief in myself. Um, Annalise wrote, I think life showed you how to live the best world that you want. I agree. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. How did you manage to find the love within you when you were at your lowest? That's a good question. Um, it was definitely a process. I started just because I knew that I wanted in general, I knew that I wanted more for myself than to cry myself to sleep every night. Um, I just decided that I had enough, that I'd had enough and I wanted, I wanted more. I wanted to experience life differently. And the journey to do that just began from me speaking love and light onto myself, even if I didn't necessarily believe it, even if every part of me didn't necessarily hear it in those moments, I kept speaking it unto myself until I believed it, until I knew that it was true. And I used different um, methods such as journaling, yoga, meditation, um, just doing things that I love. I love to dance. I love to sing. And I think that's one of the most, I think that's one of the best ways that people can cultivate joy and love in their life is by finding something that you truly enjoy and allows you to be very present and just keep doing that until you find that love and peace within yourself. Um, let's see, we have another question. What would you say to young athletes getting started today and how to balance competition, ambition, and mental health? Um, to young athletes getting started, the most important thing is to honestly just have fun. I know how cliche that sounds, but whether you're a beginner or an elite professional, if you're not having fun, you're not going to learn, you're not going to get better um, because you're stressing yourself out. You're too focused on trying to do everything right instead of doing something that you genuinely enjoy. Um, and how to balance competition, ambition, and mental health. Balancing competition and mental health is, I think, the most important thing is to find a rhythm or a routine that helps you stay balanced, that helps you stay positive, that helps you um, be at your best self. For me, if I don't meditate for two weeks, I'm not going to be my best self. I am going to feel heavy. Uh, I'm going to be sad, maybe, or just out of, out of sorts. Um, so taking a look inside of you and understanding what your spirit needs to be joyous, to be at peace is, is a journey you'll have to take on your own. Let's see. Do we have any other questions here? Let's see. Hmm. Um, so we also, if we also have any, any writers, we have writing questions, journaling questions, athletes, of course, um, or balancing your mental state, purpose, ambition, all of these things, uh, if you're curious about. I had some other questions actually that people from Instagram asked and I will see what they were wondering. So um, someone asked, are there moments that you may doubt your spiritual belief or connection? If yes, how do you get it back? For me, I don't 
doubt the connection itself. Um, I know that that's always there, but I may struggle feeling that connection. For example, I felt very connected last year after Worlds, um, after I got the bronze medal or during that whole experience. And there was a slump where I didn't feel as connected. My body didn't feel at ease. My mind wasn't as at ease. And it's hard to get that back. And But I think that I also wasn't keeping up with my rituals. Um, and so this goes back to the question that I answered earlier, where if you know what you need to do, if you know what you need to keep yourself balanced, then you can maintain your connection in the end. But overall, I know that connection is always there. I know that source energy, all of that is always present. It's just a matter of keeping up with yourself. Um, another question that I had was about my book. So how, what was the writing process like for the book? My book is mostly journal prompts um, that I have been writing since 2019. Um, so like I said, that journaling was a big part of my healing process, whether I was, whether I knew that's what, what I was doing at the time or not, it became something that showed um, tangible pro progress and growth within my journey. And that was something that I knew would be something that could help people along their own journey. So my writing process was basically me, me just writing every single day. That's really it. Does anybody else have any questions on here? If not, I'll wait a little bit. Let's see. Oh, I did. Okay, okay. So someone said, not a question. Oh, not a question, but good luck at the World Track and Field Championships. Thank you. Um, someone wrote a poem, which is nice. <laughs> I guess I'll read it. Or I'll, sh I'll share it in the, in the chat. It's in the chat. Uh, what motivated you to write your book? It was, honestly, I was writing a different book. I was writing a, a fiction book about uh, this woman in Cuba and trafficking. But I decided to start for you, Anthem, because I wanted to put something out there that would be quick and easy for people to use in their mental health journey. Um, but I met a, a literary agent and she told me that she felt like the book really needed to be out there to see the world. And so I started writing more and it just kept building and flowing and changing into something huge that I really feel like is going to help people. That's really what the motivation is, is to help people who feel like um, they're alone in their, their process of healing and I want them to know they're not. Annalise wrote, yes, writing became a healing medicine for many of us. Okay, good. Um, there's one question I think I missed. Um, how do you manage? How do you manage to find, oh, and you did not fail the race is still going because you are alive and is using your experience to motivate, uplift, and encourage. That is success for me. Plus you are using lessons learned to help others. Thank you, Annalise. Okay. So that question, I think I kind of answered this one. How do you manage to find the love within you when you were at your lowest? Let me see if there's anything else in here. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, yeah, so we are mostly at the end of the session. If nobody else has anything else. Oh, we do have one question here. What is your favorite story from the book? That's an interesting question, let's see. My favorite story from the book. Um, 
I would say I write about feeling crazy. I don't know if it's a favorite, but it's what pops in my mind right now. With my whole life, I feel like I've been called crazy and it's not necessarily a bad crazy. Nobody ever says it's a bad crazy, but sometimes when you are not feeling great about yourself, you really start to feel a little crazy. Like, am I crazy? Um, and I just feel like that's one that a lot of people are going to be able to relate to because I think everybody feels a little weird and a little out of place and a little bit like an outsider sometimes. Um, and I think that one's just kind of fun listing all the reasons why I feel like I might be crazy. Um, yes, but then right after that, I share a note that my brother had written to me saying that, yes, he does think I'm crazy. And he writes why I'm crazy and that it's okay to be the type of crazy that I am because that's what's gotten me the success that I've had on the track, the the perseverance perseverance that I've been through to make this book happen. And, and I think that's okay. I think all of us need to accept our crazy. Thank you for that question. That was fun. Um, Annalise says, thanks for your beautiful smile. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. That's it for me though. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you're able to take something from this. Um, if you want to stay up to date about when the book goes on pre-sale, follow my Medium page, toryfranklin.medium.com and subscribe to the emails or follow my Instagram page at livehappy, L-I-V-E-H-A-P-P-I-I. -I. Thank you guys and have a good night. I wish love upon you.